Welcome to Leading and Loving Life, the go-to podcast for women seeking God's wisdom and transformation. I'm a called wire, and I'm here to guide you. Facing life's challenges, this is your place for inspiration, laughter, and God's love. We're all about empowering you through a strong bond with Jesus. Discover God's word with us. Let it guide, uplift, and remind you of your worth. We're here for every woman eager to grow in His grace. We will dive into genuine stories, celebrate triumphs, and get faith-based insights for daily life. Leading and Loving Life isn't just a podcast, it's a sisterhood. Here, we lead with purpose, love deeply, and laugh amidst challenges. Now join us and become a part of our purpose-driven community. Work, work, Well, hello, work. friends. I'm so happy that you're back for part two with Question and Answer with Dana Burke Walter. We are still talking about our purpose, and we've got a great conversation coming ahead. Enjoy. Well, Dana, thank you so much for sharing that with me because that just goes right along. And I love that scripture that you have shared with us because it goes right along with um, the devotional that we have. And we spent four days on that, just that one scripture, Ephesians 2.10, um, talking about, you know, we are his workmanship and he has prepared things in advance for us to do. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to us, just as you were saying, you know, earlier in your life when you were on a completely different path. And that lady had spoke life into you and said, you need to go become a nurse. She saw something in you. There was something. And and I even think about that when people step out and share, she didn't have to, but she was even obeying God in that moment. Who knows if she was a Christian or not, but she was obeying what she had heard. And she said, and I just think that's um, really just incredible for all of us to remember that we're not alone in this journey and God will get us there, but we do have a part to play and it is obedience. It's mm-hmm. a big part of obedience is what he's calling us to do. Um, I'm looking even back over um, the past, you know, just notes of what uh, of going back over Ephesians um, 2 10, because we spent from day 11 to day 14 on that. And so with that, God has something to say with every single scripture. So I love that you brought that um, because that wasn't planned for us to have that part of the scripture, but um, he equips us for what we have for this moment. And, and, you know, another question that just goes right into it is how can we push ourselves past when God is calling you to do something you're afraid to do? I know in my situation, you know, like when God called us from teaching and said, here we go, we're we want you to step, I want you to step out and I want you to do this. Yeah. I had some, I mean, I had peace in my heart. So I don't know if you can relate with that, even with nursing, like you go on to nursing, but I had peace in my heart, but I still had those questions of what if, Mm -hmm. what if this doesn't work? What if I'm not hearing right? What if I'm not doing, even with this podcast, I mean, I know stepping out and changing professions, that's a huge thing. But along the way, Again, I was listening to God. We're we're praying. We're seeking His face. We're asking Him what He has for us. So, how do we push past um, that fear of? Okay, we know this is what. I mean, how do we how do we push past that? It's just I think you know fear or that song fear is a liar. Yes, <laughs> and the devil I feel like really does a good job at putting that fear and then just our past failures sometimes can put that fear in us and and make us not want to oh I wasn't good at that or I didn't do this you know I could have let that going to um going into paralegal and and not liking that it's not that it wasn't a good job it just wasn't what God chose me to do you know it's a great job for someone else who he's gifted and for that but that was not what he was calling me to do um, it had nothing even to do with my, it, like my personality. So, I mean, I mean a little bit, but not really, I'm a very outgoing people person. But so in saying that, um, pushing past our fear is, um, when you have a little bit of experience and as you're moving through your, as you see God moving in your life, I feel like he gives you those little confidences, like, see, I'm here with you. Yes. You know, that even if, that even yes. if you have to get to the point where you say, even if it doesn't matter with me, I was a single mom for a time and still kind of am. Um, 
and I would get all tangled up over what if something happens to my, you know, pool in the back, my pool pump in the backyard, or what if this, or what if that. And you know what's so funny is that he's either put the right people in my path to help me along the way, or I've learned to Google stuff. I've learned to fix the pool pump. I've learned to do a lot of things that I never thought I could do. I'll travel halfway across the United States with my kids, which was not totally in my personality. But I said, I want the abundant life that God called to give me. And if I don't step out, then I'm putting myself in box. Nobody else is in is going to um, make your life for you. You have to make your life yourself. And God has called us to have a big abundant life but we have to take that we have to take what he's giving us and we have to step out like we were talking me and mccall were talking even yesterday sometimes you have to step out to find out you know um i'm a big joyce meyer fan i don't know if everybody is but i love it that the fact that she even said the same thing she was like you know when i started i started working in the nursery and well we figured out how that went and so And that's just part of it. So God, you know, uses us for different things, but he will, I mean, if we're not moving in the right direction, he'll pull us back, you know? And so when you're praying and you're in your quiet time, you know, listen to how you feel about stuff. Like let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Um, One scripture for me was 2 Timothy 1, 7. And I said, how do I feel about what I'm being called to do? You know, and, and I'll have, you know, First Timothy, or sorry, Second Timothy one seven says, "For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and of sound mind or sound judgment." You know, does it mean that everything that He has called us to do is going to be easy, no. or that you're not going to experience times of anxiety or a little bit of fear as you're walking through it? Because guess what, we walk in the flesh. And we have to realize that, you know what, sometimes obedience has to over, overtake our feeling about something. And that's when you draw back and you pray about it a little bit, like, and listen to who God puts in your life. I was praying, I will tell you, this teaching, this class has not been an easy thing for me. I um, never saw myself as a teacher. So that wasn't, I am the only thing, the only people I ever taught were my children, their devotionals every night when we would talk about it. So um, and me just speaking up in class and that kind of stuff, but never besides in my education if, as a nursing, was I ever in a teaching role, but you know what? I will tell you that if God's going to use you, he is going to put people in your life with, um, that will encourage you, that will, um, be with you, that will even tell you when you're trying to back out, Hey, God's calling you to this. Like, don't back out. I was taking communion at church one morning. I'm hands in the air praying and asking God, like, put somebody else here because I don't feel confident in my role in this class. I feel like you called, like, maybe they heard wrong. Maybe I heard wrong. I don't know. But I will tell you what, Kathy Watson, who is a incredible, incredible, <laughs> I'm sure she'll be on this podcast. You'll get to hear her. Um, she is um, a very strong woman of faith. And it's such an encourager. And she hears, we know she hears directly from God, but she came up to me as I'm praying and says, Dana, you are anointed and you are called. And I, it just was like, oh, I mean, okay, God, at that point, I had a choice to make. Am I going to give into my feelings? That's right. Or am I going to be obedient and push past this? Because I know that. Number one, whatever you called me to, you're going to equip me. That's right. And he has. It's not that I do it perfectly, but I'm a year and almost a half into this now, and I'm, st- I'm doing it. And I'm going to do it until God calls me to do something else or, you know, whatever else he's got prepared for me to do. So that is amazing. And I just... Thank you so much for being obedient because you encourage us every time. I've heard nothing but truly good um, words, encouragement. I've heard nothing but good come from your class. I mean, people are learning and they see. And what makes it even better is you're real. You know, I mean, you're a real person walking in. Not that I'm not a real person too, but you know, when the teacher knows everything, they're like, yeah, well, she's a teacher. She knows it. 
No, but what I'm saying is like, you are relatable. You are someone that people can, you know, relate with and relate to. And you encourage me because you tell me like it is and you encourage me. And so I'm so thankful for you because you've changed my life as well. And just encourage. It's so fun to have conversations with people where we can encourage one another and, and know, you know what? You're nervous to do it, but you're walking in that obedience and you're trusting God. And so that encourages me. Well, if Dana can do it, I can do it. Because if he did it for her, he'll do it for me. And that might look different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not always going to look the same, but that is so encouraging to be like, I'm not alone in this and we can, we can walk this through. Well, we had another question as well, but I really feel like that we have hit that because it is saying when you feel called by God, how do you start your calling when you're not exactly sure what he's calling you to do? Well, it is stepping out. It is stepping out, being obedient in those little things. Don't ever under, what am I trying to say here? Don't ever underestimate or don't ever take, like think the small steps of obedience aren't important. It's so small steps along the way, no matter what you're doing, that can almost even have the biggest impact later, you know, in your life. And as you were saying, um, you know, Second Timothy 1, 7, for we do not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. That is something that that was one of the very first scriptures that I memorized. I personalized for myself. I had to say, I do not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And so those are just taking those thoughts captive, not allowing the enemy to keep you in that fear of whatever it is, whether it's um, fear of starting a new job or fear of what's going to happen if I go to this place. I don't know these people. I'm I'm an introvert. I don't want to leave my home or I don't want to, you know, step out of my comfort zone, which we've talked about leaving your comfort zone. It's all those things that the enemy puts that in us. But fear, I want you to know, is also false evidence appearing real. And sometimes we can make a mountain out of a molehill and make it bigger than it really is. So it's just part of even that process of walking in our purpose, understanding what our purpose is. Um, renewing our mind to the washing of God's word, spending time with him. And that's what you had to do, you know, through your walk and your time with the Lord. I had to do that. You said earlier, even we cannot forsake assembling together. That is part of God's word. You know, do not forsake the assembling of being together. And that's in Hebrews. That's finding yourself in a connect group, finding yourself on a serve team, you know, becoming part of a of something that's bigger than yourself and believing God and trusting him, he will equip you for whatever he is calling you to do. And we've got to push past and say, am I available to God? I have that written down in my notes. Am I available to him? And we ask ourselves that, but it's like, truly God's looking, you said it, God's looking for someone who's available. Yes, absolutely. And I do feel like that um, once I started being obedient, that is going to church, that is getting into my word, that it is all these things um, and spending quiet time with him every day. You know, I, that is when I saw him moving in my life, that doing those things, you know, being in a church body, you have people who will pray for you and encourage you and um, help push you along to your will just like, or his, the God's purpose for your life. So I did not see that, um, I was that, that, uh, about this class, you know, I did not see it, but Joe and McCall saw that that was what God had for me. Sometimes it's easier for other people to see, you know, see things, they see the good in you and things that you never see in yourself. You may not have that confidence. I didn't have that confidence myself, but they said, Hey, we see this in you and we think that you can do good with this. I had to take that on. And as I have done it and been obedient to it, God has given me confidence. In it. That's right. And, and it's, and it's able for me, it's almost even therapy. I get to talk about stuff, my testimony and life. And it's, I realized, you know what? I've been healed from a lot of things and God's been so good to me and my family. It's made me be so thankful for everything and every person in this church body and all my friends. These are not just my church body. These are my family. These people are an extension of me. And I try to be an extension of them. 
And that is what God calls us to be in the body of Christ. You need your people. You need good, godly people who have the same standards in life that you do. God's so standards, good. God's word. It's easy to find friends out in the world, but what what kind of what kind of advice are they given? What kind of, you know, like what are their standards? You know, be careful as I tell you listening to people who you listen to, you know, and always pray and always stay in his word. That's right. That is so good and such timely, just timely conversation that we're having. And I thank you again so much for being here. What a special treat that you have been able to come on. And I hope you'll come back. Oh, I will. Good. I love it. I love this because literally, again, we're just sitting down having a great conversation about God's word and um, just having a cup of coffee together and love and life. So thank you so much. I'm going to pray over you today. And um, we look forward to seeing you back again tomorrow. Father God, in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Christ, we come boldly to your throne of grace, favor, and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this conversation today. I pray that this word goes forth on good ground. And those that hear the sound of my voice, Lord, I pray that they are seeking your face, saying, God, thank you for helping me find this podcast. Thank you for what you're speaking to me. Thank you for opening my ears and opening my eyes and I receive new and fresh revelation from you today. And God, I pray for everyone that we would all walk in obedience to what you have for us. And we would not let fear hold us back. We're taking your word for truth. We're taking your word for hours. And we're getting it from our head knowledge to heart knowledge. And we're saying, God, we are here. We are available. And Lord, we want to be used by you. So Thank you, Lord, for this moment today. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for sending your son to die for us because you love us and you have redeemed us in every way possible. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm thrilled that you've chosen to join me. Each week, it is my hope that you are encouraged through what you hear and know that you belong here and you are loved. So I have a little favor to ask. If you find value and joy in what you hear today, I encourage you to share this podcast with your friends and family. Spread the word about leading and loving life with Jesus so that together we can create a community of love, faith, and growth. Thank you once again for joining me today. May this podcast be a beacon of light and hope in your life, guiding you towards a deeper connection with Jesus and a greater sense of purpose. Until next time, be blessed, be inspired, and keep leading and loving life with Jesus.